try to <laughs> fix it. Uh, we are trying the new light and we are doing it on uh, my phone. It has been a while since we did a live stream together with our beautiful professional psychologist Alicia Bolichenka. So we have decided to do a live stream today for you and to talk about most common data mistakes that we have observed in 2022. Alicia, I will try mm -hmm. to open YouTube on my computer so that uh, I can get uh, the questions. Guys, uh, please let us know if you can see us, if you can hear us. Alicia, ah, so in ah, your opinion, yeah. the most common or the most drastic data mistakes that you have observed in 2022 so far? Already? <laughs> um, okay, what happened on dates uh, this year? What happened? Um, I think that the most common mistakes and a mistake and just ageless actually is having totally unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that uh, some gentlemen and some ladies they exaggerate uh, this uh, desire to have this insta love, to have this sparkle, to feel butterflies in the stomach right on the first date. They romanticize too much this experience, and when they don't mm -hmm. feel this insta love, uh, they feel deceived. They live in their dreams and uh, they uh, um, don't enjoy the moment that they have uh, in real life. And yeah, this is one of the most biggest mistakes on the dates. No, I can see us both on the computer and on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Alicia, yeah. how to build realistic dating expectations? How to prevent yourself from being disappointed? Uh, you know, you should remember always that we are real people, just people. We all have some... Um, pluses and minuses and we, ho we all have some um, things that are very perfect and things that are not very perfect and um, you can't uh, I'm not perfect and you are not perfect but in other way we both are very perfect you know <laughs> so uh, you should understand that people who are around you they have their own some expectations and they uh, also wait to meet someone who is perfect and for some people you are not perfect so i think alisa tries to say that uh, it is important to go out on dates knowing that not everybody will choose you back even though uh, this lady was pre-selected by a matchmaker yes and sometimes clients they kind of uh, push us to pre-select matches who in our opinion are for example not as good as other ladies but gentlemen have this uh, very high expectations regarding the looks of the lady and uh, they think that uh, if a matchmaker is introducing him to this very, very attractive woman uh, who is uh, if we compare like by looks she is way out of his lane so if you look at his photo and her photo she is more attractive mm -hmm. so he thinks that just because she goes out with him on a date it means uh, that uh, she will choose him back and they do not, not always take into account competition because if the lady is attractive and she is easygoing and she has this bubbly personality and uh, she knows uh, how to behave on a date and she knows how to present herself and if she is actively searching um, if she is smart about her dating strategy then she is not limiting her uh, dates to one date with our client once per year in a sense that she can be on tinder she can be on any other dating platforms and she can be open to courtship in the sense that uh, at work for example her colleagues uh, can be courting her when she goes out she is approached by men and of course she compares uh, the men who approach her and like every human being she wants to choose someone who is in her opinion best perfect. for her mm -hmm. perfect or best for her and it's not a bad scene and for example, when we introduce such a lady to our client, and if our client is more like of a shy guy or he's awkward, or for example, he's 15 years older than she is, she can compare like, should I continue going out with him because he's like 15 years older and uh, he has 
let's say an average job, an average income, and he's older, then there is this guy who is, for example, her age, and uh, he is more talkative, and he's an exec executive director, and he's well traveled, so she compares. So when you go out, you have to keep in mind that there will be competition. Not only you are choosing, the lady has to choose you back. And of course, if gentlemen are listening to our advice, mm -hmm. um, then we try to uh, pre-select those matchers where the chances are stronger that she will choose him back. But sometimes gentlemen, they kind of uh, rob us from this opportunity because they keep declining. Strong candidates uh, telling that, oh, she's not hot enough, I'm not attracted, she's not good enough for me. And then we had to uh, concentrate mostly on looks to please uh, his uh, desire to meet someone very attractive. We understand that there will be competition. The client thinks that he just has to show up. He doesn't have to be like witty, charming. He doesn't have to share any interesting stories with her. Uh, she has to choose him back because he finds her attractive. Mm -hmm. That's a bit unrealistic. Uh, what else? Uh, I would say that um, from all the dates that we have shuttled this winter, December, January, so far, um, many gentlemen uh, be seeing that everybody has to like him. So yes, one of the ladies says no. For example, they went out on a first date and uh, she thought that he would look younger, like in real life. Like we've told her that, for example, oh, he's like 15 or 12 years older, but he uh, is very active and uh, he uh, has this interest and maybe you should give it a try. And he is not very active. And he goes, uh, she goes out with him and she tells after the date that, uh, you know what, I feel that he's kind of older and I'm used to dating like younger men. Perhaps if she was meeting other men who is like 12 years older, she would be given different feedback. We don't know that. And for a gentleman, the fact that uh, one of the matches has rejected him, he feels so upset. Alisa has shared a very interesting opinion uh, when camera is off, uh, that probably the gentleman thinks that uh, he has paid for the dates, so everybody has to have say yes to him. I was not thinking about it this way. I was thinking more that it is like, the male ego and the fact that, uh, oh, how come she said no to me? Guys, please let us know in the comments below, uh, in your opinion, is it just the bruised male ego or is it about money that I have paid the matchmaker so all the matches have to say yes to me after oh, the this is both. Yeah, maybe it's a combination of factors. Alisa, let's talk about female mistakes, since oh. you are the expert on ladies. <laughs> this is my favorite part. <laughs> Um, ladies, because they're so amazing. <laughs> um, they also have their own expectations about you, dear gentlemen. And you are always, um, not always, you are as much beautiful, as much gorgeous as you think you are. And as ladies expected you are. So this is a problem also. Sometimes you have some problems with uh, some uh, with your health or with your um, attitude to something and uh, you don't like something in Ukraine in your trip and you try to uh, to tell this to your match. I don't know why you do this. Nobody likes or, people who complain. And ladies, um, I think um, that you are old because of this, um, some comments. Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon ladies, nice to see you both smiling this Monday morning. And ladies think that you are old because you always complain on something, you always don't like something, you know, so and it's not very good. It's not a very um, good... Uh, um, mood for your first dates with ladies because they also expect to have some fun dates you know so it's interesting i was thinking that we uh, don't get so many ladies who complain on dates as we get men so occasionally we get a lady who tell that oh she didn't enjoy the salad in the restaurant but usually ladies go out on a date with a man so she can complain that for example oh he looked older than his photo or he looked uh, shorter than I have expected him to be, or I was bored, 
or he was asking these strange questions, I will read the comment mm -hmm. this one. So, uh, I think that ladies, uh, when they are complaining, they more address uh, the date. So they are partner, what she didn't like about the date. Yes. This man, unfortunately, recently we had the situation when a gentleman is complaining about the restaurant, Everything hotel, around. about uh, custom, sir, uh, custom when he flew to Ukraine. About music in the restaurant. Music, yes. Uh, about wine. So he's complaining and it gives such old vibes. So ladies give feedback that he's complaining like a real grandpa. Yes, uh, so nobody likes dating someone who is negative about everything, so we get it, it is life, and sometimes, uh, for example, coffee is not good in the restaurant. But you can concentrate on positive things. After all, when you're meeting someone new, it's not about tasty coffee. When you're meeting young ladies or young, young people at all, you know, when you are young, you concentrate on something positive, on something good. You see the world around in some pink glasses, you know, so everything is so gorgeous and you are on your date and uh, this is so amazing. Like but uh, somebody writes, uh, you, are, you are guys both of floozy. I don't know what floozy means. Do you? What do you mean? Where do you read this? Ah, ah, uh -huh. Over here. What does it mean? But okay. there are some beautiful smiles. <laughs> so we will take it as a compliment. <laughs> so you were talking about positive and negative. Attitude. When you are young, you see a world around and uh, you try to con you are tr concentrating on something good and positive, and you talk about this in positive way, you know. So this is um, the aspects of uh, young people. But when you are old, the older you get the more uh, ungood things you see, you know, something not Actually, perfect. I was thinking that we had this client in his late 20s and he was complaining too. So uh, I think like with age, yes, it usually yes. gets worse. Yes, yes. Uh, it's also, uh, it depends on personality. So when you travel to Ukraine to date, we want to travel agency. So we shuttle days. Of course, we can help our, our clients choose a nice restaurant, choose uh, a hotel. Uh, but we can't be responsible that, for example, in this restaurant, uh, your neighbors, uh, they were loud. For example, they ran out of rabbit. This story about rabbit, now it's a legend. Um, so we can't be responsible that uh, Turkish Airlines uh, were late like, for 30 minutes. You know that like several week, a week ago, because of the snowstorm, mm -hmm. and it happens in Istanbul like one in, once in a lifetime, they had to reschedule all the flights and people were stuck in the airport for like two, three days. So it happens when you travel and luggage gets lost. So again, it depends on your attitude. And also what I have noticed recently, uh, gentlemen, when they go out and for example, one of the dates, uh, one of the ladies is not interested to go out with him on the second date. It's he brings, tragedy. He brings this mood uh, to the next dates with other people. It's like tragedy. How come like she did she doesn't want to go out with me like get over yourself not all people will like you and it is okay it's not it's like life. it's not like everybody uh, is supposed to like you the trick is to find people who will find you interesting attractive and you can give yourself a chance to explore your possibilities with ladies who actually like you and who are uh, give you all the signals that court me, I'm interested, I want to see how things will go. But out of a sudden, because this woman is not interested in me, then uh, I will be nasty to all other women, or I will be not present on all other dates. And again, uh, another mistake that I have observed among men, ladies don't do it, that, oh, I really like Marina's face, but I like Natasha's body more, and Irina, she had this personality, she's so bubbly and easygoing. Can you yeah. cut them? Yes. <laughs> I was so bad with the face of this girl, body of this girl, personality of this girl, and the level of English of your interpreter. Mm -hmm. Can you combine it and uh, like bring it to the table number three? Like, no, we all come as a package deal, so you can't press a lot certain qualities. <laughs> yes, and also. Uh, beauty and attraction it's built of so many layers if a lady in front of you is by your standards 
uh, gorgeous and she had this most attractive uh, face and body but for example she has zero interest in you after the date with you because she finds you not attractive enough she is not attracted to your jokes or she doesn't like what she sees for whatever reasons there is no sense crying over her like really she didn't pick you well there will be other women who can pick you but out of a sudden she becomes this idol this perfection because she said no and men lose chances to actually uh, meet someone who can show them back Молодец, очень забавная девочка. Google Translator. <laughs> it is hard to read it. So this is what I have noticed. So uh, if you like the personality of one woman, personality is something that can't be changed. Like she can grow her hair, she can dye her hair, lose a few kilos, gain a few kilos. But personality and attitude to you this is where people should appreciate. I'm not encouraging you to date someone who has dirt under her nails, but in Ukraine it's really hard to meet oh, a woman yeah. like that. Yes, and uh, attraction is built of many layers, and to really like a person, you have to get to know a person. You have to spend time together, or you have to uh, watch how two of you will interact in different situations. So only then you can claim that, uh, oh, she is the one, or I think there can be more. Like first date when you have just seen each other, it's your shallow desire to choose the most beautiful picture. You don't know uh, how she will react to you. You don't know if she will find you attractive enough. You don't know uh, what type of man she usually dates and mm -hmm. if you can actually compete uh, with those type of men. Not always, by the way. Are uh, guys any other questions? I think we can. We have time for a few more questions and then we must jump into filming uh, a podcast for our ladies uh, because it's a filming day today in the office by the way we have received this strange email today that we hope we are not dead they hope we are not dead yet we are alive yes so we wanted to say that <laughs> <laughs> yes it snows outside and uh, we have this uh, pretty winter yet I still feel like decorating another Christmas tree. Every time it snows and it is so pretty outdoors, I feel like bringing out all the Christmas decorations. I want some. Okay, do you have any questions? <laughs> Alisa is impatient. Our psychologist is impatient today. Mm -hmm. Alisa, I have another question for you. Okay. Um, while we have you uh, in the office and... cold hands. Yeah, I always have cold hands. I have uh, <laughs> warm hearts and cold hands. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen often tell that you just have to show my picture to the ladies and they all <laughs> will be willing to date me. Can you open a secret? <laughs> what it is usually like when you show a photo of a gentleman who claims we just have to show his photo? He is not very good. Uh, he looks old. He looks not very beautiful, uh, not very active, uh, not, 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 you know, and uh, in this case I usually uh, should tell... Oh, uh, he's a Gemini! How come you have showed me yes, a Gemini? Uh, uh, I always tell that uh, um, he, is a very, he has a very good personality and you need to communicate with him and uh, you will build your, uh, build your relationship not with appearance but with personality, etc, etc, etc. But uh, 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 ladies not always uh, very um, enthusiastic about your looks, you know. Guys think that it doesn't, uh, it, uh, it doesn't matter much to women what they look like. Ha, ha. <laughs> I think that's not true. Under every second video, there is always a saying that, uh, oh, in Ukraine, they don't have enough men, so they have the same, but a man should be a little bit more attractive than a monkey. And no. I always think that, where do these men get this idea from? We have enough men, and we have a very beautiful men, by the way, you know, so uh, we have beautiful people at all, not only ladies are beautiful in Ukraine but also and gentlemen are very beautiful do you have beautiful husband yes you see uh -huh. and you <laughs> yes of course 
So it, it, you can't say that uh, uh, gentlemen here are not beautiful or not uh, healthy, handsome or something like this. That's not true. What towers sign are the best lovers? Well, unfortunately, some women, they uh, read uh, some articles online and she That's has not her, true. her own understanding. <laughs> she has her own understanding which sign is suitable to her. So uh, men usually think that uh, he is such a catch. By the way, about best lovers, you know, <sighs> when a gentleman tells that he is a very good lover, usually, you know, False he is not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you should not talk a lot about this. Seeing these photos, I have noticed it so many times when I have a consultation and uh, usually it's a first consultation with a potential client mm -hmm. and the gentleman writes there in the questionnaire which age groups uh, he is interested in and for example I see that he is 54 and he writes something that he is interested in ladies uh, 25 and up till 34 and then he writes that oh I just don't look my age and age is just a number and I think and act like I am 37 and uh, my uh, real age, uh, uh, it doesn't determine me, etc. I usually sense problem in the ear. And usually once we start talking uh, on Skype and I actually see him, he looks his age, sometimes even older. And uh, his hobbies, what he's telling about, uh, his expectations uh, regarding his marriage, life and relationship. He sounds like a gentleman who is 54. So if you had feel this need to tell by words or right that I just don't look my age. Uh, well, that's a red flag that reality is different. Remember, guys, we always have women who don't look their age. She is 50 or 60, but in her soul, she is 30 years old. So we can introduce you to her. Oh, my favorite. Oh, I am uh, 47, but I am sexually very active and I'm such a passionate woman. Oh! So only a man under 35 or better like 28 can satisfy me and we get such requests like every day. So in our videos, in our blogs, we try to open reality to you a little bit more to show what it is like from both sides, uh, female camp, male camp. So we try to be somewhere in the middle, like a bridge between these two kingdoms. Um, of course, we do get clients who can really succeed in dating much younger. We have this gentleman, he is 54, a very successful doctor from the United States. He bought his private jet and he speaks several languages. He is super well traveled and he has this power of money, let's be honest. So many women, much younger women, found him attractive and he dates much younger back home in the US. But he has never said that he is so no. a good lover or something like no. this. <laughs> he talked about uh, languages he speaks, countries he has visited, um, life that he leads, uh, what is his everyday life like, uh, and uh, how he thinks it will change once he meets uh, the right lady. And then I get a gentleman who is, for example, his age, but he is a school teacher. And he claims that. Uh, or, for example, university professor, that uh, his students adore him, so he has to date someone in her 20s, since he, is, uh, he gets so well with students, and he can't imagine touching a woman in her 40s. And I look at him and I understand that it will be extremely hard to find a lady in her 40s, because he wants to date someone, Glenn Rose, who will choose him back. Well, it is possible, but it will be hard. I already imagine hours of work. Greetings from Central Switzerland, uh, Gruzi, Intenant. Uh, oh, hello, <laughs> uh, the Central Switzerland. So usually when we talk to a potential client, male or female, we already try to imagine what type of women and men will find him attractive and why. Avisa, talk a little bit more about interviews with the ladies. Okay. Yes, I have an example, by mm -hmm. the way, you know, Jump in. this uh, autumn, I had an interview with a very uh, good looking lady. She is 42 years old, but she's really a very good looking. 
she is divorced, she has one adult kid, about 20 years old or something like this. But you know, she is very sexual active and she wants to meet someone who is also sexual active, very active. And she is uh, not interested in a gentleman who is 40, even 40, or 40, 42, 40, 42, or 45, because 40 years old, he, 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 he can't uh, satisfy me sexually. I want someone at least 35 or younger. I was a guest speaker. Um, uh, they have local speed dating in Kharkov for local Ukrainian men and women. And I was a guest speaker there. Uh, they did uh, something like a webinar or a live stream. And uh, people were asking, like uh, people who usually attend such events, they were asking me questions live. And there was one woman, she said that she is 42 or 43 and she can't imagine touching a man who is 45 years old enough. She said that 50 years old men, they smell like they old men. An old butt. And she's like 42 or 43, <laughs> she has a kid and uh, I have asked her like what age group she's interested in and she said that uh, oh 30s and usually she dates online and she writes that she is 35 and I've honestly told her that lying about your age on dating apps is so not cool because people will see the reality and pretty much a man like in her in his 20s or early 30s he can really go out with her because he wants to have this experience, yes, sexual experience yes, of being a lot of older guys, by the way. woman. He wants to have it in his so-called portfolio. What are you doing with my hands? <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember this uh, scene from uh, Sex and the City? When, uh, Samantha. <laughs> yes. He has all but. <laughs> of course not all women are like that. But uh, when our clients tell us that, oh, it's a piece of cake to introduce me, we hear lots of excuses why she doesn't want to date him, like every day. and. We filter through this uh, women who don't want to go out with him, claiming that he smells old, even though he is like only seven or five years older than she is. So different people have different understanding. Some, of some ladies like. uh, will really find you old. That's uh, that's normal. I think we need to. Or I think we can take one more question one if there is a question, question. and uh, we will finish it. Uh, now people will accuse us of being negative. Uh, no, we are just being... Like, we are not negative, look at us. Very, very <laughs> realistic and very, very honest. Today I got a question from a lady and she has a two years old son and she was asking like realistically to meet someone locally, to meet someone Russian speaking abroad and what were her chances to meet someone who will accept a mother, a single mother with a kid. and. The problem was, like, she has a two years old, but she's not open to date a man who has children. And I've honestly told her that, of course, there is a slim chance that, that there will be a guy of a certain age group or with a certain level of education because she wants someone uh, with a higher level of education. She's well educated herself. Someone who is well traveled, she is well traveled, uh, uh, who will be open to date a woman with a kid, but in that group, age group where she is looking, most men. Uh, who are, do not have children, they are looking for someone who also doesn't have kids. So she said that she will think about it. Men and women both can have totally unrealistic expectations about their partner, about uh, the market where they can be attractive. Okay, uh, cultural differences regarding sexuality, it's sad Slavic culture, very shy. What? Who are shy? We are shy! We were talking for 15 minutes that women claim that, oh, she's so sexual. It depends a lot uh, on their uh, personality. Of course, like this hookup culture, like in the United States, it's not spread here. So like one night stands, I don't think that it is the same here. Alisa, what do you think about one night stands? I still think about we are shy. <laughs> I will read it. Can you tell about one night stands? Oh, it's not very uh, common for Ukrainian ladies, you know, because we all want to create a family, we all want to create a strong relationship, and it's not about finding the one night stand. So. Uh, the gentleman writes, why don't you organize a speed dating event for men in Switzerland? That would be great. We don't do speed dating uh, right now. We tried it a few times, but uh, we love old school matchmaking. 
I was a guest speaker at uh, a speed dating event and they have uh, an Instagram account so many people follow it for locals and uh, we wanted some dating tips like what to wear, which topics to avoid, why he is not talk, uh, texting me back or why I feel shy talking to people on speed dating so I was a guest speaker there. Uh, what is the oldest ladies you have in your database and 61 and not interested in high uh, maintenance beauty queen? Um, we have many ladies in their 50s and, and 60s. And, yes, in their 60s also we have very many, beautiful. Many attractive women and uh, not all of them are high maintenance. Yes, we have some ladies who are in there, for example, 50s and 60s, and you can call her a uh, high maintenance. Uh, we have, uh, last, last week we have a new uh, lady and she is 59 years old. She speaks uh, um, Italian fluent. She is a translator and she has some basic English, so she's very beautiful. Oh, I was referred with a lady uh, on Friday, and it is interesting. The company that did a CR, like a search engine optimization for us years ago, a manager from that company has uh, recommended us to his female colleague, and she is in her 50s and she speaks English, so we will have an interview with her soon. So. We recruit different ladies into our database. Mm -hmm. Right now, we try to concentrate on ladies who speak English, since the majority of our clients demand to date sure. someone who uh, speaks English, and we don't take as many ladies as we used to who have, for example, two plus kids, like teenagers. But actually, uh, our female client, she has two teenagers. Mm -hmm. She got engaged and they're applying for a key one visa. She is 44 and her fiance, he's nine years older, and he also has two kids, but I think they are like in uh, university or right after mm -hmm. university, but they are adults independent, so it can happen. And she speaks English. Uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, what time of year is the best time to come to Ukraine and how long should we plan to stay? Uh, summer, winter, spring, autumn. Ukraine is always beautiful. If you travel to meet the ladies, uh, well, it's about dates and not as much about sightseeing. You can still combine both. In summer, it can be some people find it too hot, some people find it okay. Winter also, we have beautiful white winter. So many of our clients have seen snow for the first time in Ukraine. Um, how long should you travel to, uh, to Ukraine to even time frames? Usually we ask our clients if they are from Europe to take a long weekend so that we can schedule dates on Friday night, uh, Saturday and Sunday because nobody wants a first date on Monday night and uh, if a gentleman is from Australia, from Japan or from United States so he can't travel here like several times uh, within two months then we suggest to travel for a week, nine days to go out on dates. We don't recommend more than nine days because it's emotionally complicated to uh, have so much communication, so much attention. It's People a are lot draining, actually. Um, uh, what else? Uh, we'll be eventually focus also on German and French speaking dating. Um, we have ladies who speak French and German in our database, but not as many because nowadays English is an international language. So, uh, some people do speak these languages. Uh, as you know, my second foreign language is German. Uh, but usually people who choose German and French or they feel such strong interest to the culture or they work for companies, uh, international companies and the head offices for example in Germany usually people pick English because uh, well it's an international language you can uh, uh, speak English and you can uh, feel okay when you travel to the west and to the east in Switzerland we also speak German and French and retro romanish as far as I remember and some Italianish so I like it about Switzerland that you have so so many languages. Alisa, one more question uh, to you. Are you afraid? Yes. You <laughs> shouldn't be. It won't be okay. Tricky. Um interviewers with ladies. Can you share like the biggest fear of ladies? What uh, what do they fear most of all? Uh, actually about moving to another country, uh, about their life in other country uh, after marriage, after they got married and uh, how it would be there. Because they live uh, here, all their families, all their lives, etc. So they worry about this, about their future. Mm -hmm. 
And if we are talking about the first date, the fears regarding the first date. Mm, that uh, she or she, uh, she would be so, um, how to say this, um, stressed, so she wouldn't find some uh, uh, topics uh, for communication. Or that she won't understand him speaking English, or he won't understand her speaking English, or she will uh, come to this date and she will fe feel mute. So this is also a quite common fear. Our English is a modern Latin, yes, you can say in a way. Alicia is afraid of questions. <laughs> of course! <laughs> uh, does your agency get any village farmer girls? Is it true young women move to the city in their 20s and never stay in village? Some true, uh, yes, at uh, some point. But not all ladies. We can't say for all people, you know, so yes, a lot of girls. Uh, when they, um, how to say this? <laughs> I wanted to say that uh, it's like uh, the tendency, like in the whole world. Yes. If she wants to get an education, and yes, she wants she to go to, to college, the university and she moved to the city where this university is. So yes, to study there and to get a job because, like everywhere in the world, uh, like uh, the opportunities, job opportunities, of course, they are bigger in bigger cities. And if we are talking about a lady who is from a small town or from a village, uh, international dating is not their choice. So she will date a boy she went to high school with, she will marry him. The very same young. age. Yes, and they will have kids early because they don't get an opportunity to get an education. So if we are talking about small villages, like everywhere in the world, uh, they finish high school, they start working uh, on that farm or family, business, if they have it, and they stay there. If she can get into the university or college, she will move to a city, and of course, uh, she won't be willing to get married young. If she's from a tiny town, pretty much like a guy from a big city will be an outsider, so they date locally. Do they get ladies that uh, have moved from smaller towns to, uh, to Kharkov? Yes, a lot. Kharkov is a huge educational center. We have like 40 plus, I think, universities mm -hmm. here. So many people relocate to Kharkov to get an education and of course they try to stay here to use their degree or to move to Kiev, for example, mm -hmm. to the capital. I think we have time for one more question and then we will wrap it up. Time flies when we are talking to you. Oh, I like it that your hair are up. Looks nice. I'm look, I look good <laughs> in this sweater. It's <laughs> I'm small there, the sweater is big. It's actually quite cold now. <laughs> Hopefully Ukrainian ladies would also enjoy uh, to live in villages in central Switzerland and find their partner. Central Switzerland is beautiful and Switzerland is beautiful and uh, it's a small country and uh, I like it that you have such a huge variety of different languages. Again, when women, uh, when women consider international dating, they are not looking for a country, they are looking for a partner. Yes, a yes, man. of course. Uh, uh, his personality, his expectations about relationship, his desire to have or not to have kids. So it's never about this exact city. Maybe when she's very young, when she's like 23 and she romanticized the whole experience and she wants to go to Paris or to New York because she has read about it, she has seen a movie. Sometimes uh, older women also surprise us that she has watched a movie. So she wants to go it happens. only to this city. And she wants to date someone only with British accent. When you ask her, like, have you heard this British accent? No. No, <laughs> but I want it. Because people talk so much about mm -hmm. it in that movie. Guys, we hope it was helpful and uh, we hope that now you understand that we are in Kharkov and everything is well here and uh, we are not dead, as the gentleman had written us. I hope you are not dead yet. Yeah, alive. Well, I understand where he, where he comes from with that uh, message. He wanted to be nice and to check on us because of that, all, all that bullshit that they write online. But <laughs> it was strange to get an email like that <laughs> on Monday. It was helpful. Uh, we are happy. We are happy to hear it. Uh, don't forget to listen to our podcast. By the way, do you listen to our podcast, the only podcast that we host with Katerina Romanenka, our executive director? Please let us know if you like it because it's kind of strange there like to film it to get like uh, you see that 70 people or 80 people have listened to it but you don't get the feedback so they don't know if you're doing it right or wrong 
Do you have plans for move to Ukraine to live for part of the year? Uh, yes, actually we did have some couples when the gentleman has relocated to Ukraine, but usually he is a programmer and it doesn't matter much for him where to live. And we had this couple, like a gentleman, he doesn't have siblings, his parents have passed away and the lady, she has a big family with lots of cousins, so there is always a birthday to celebrate and they have relocated actually to uh, Ukraine, they have lived here for several years and then they have relocated to Thailand, then to Turkey, so they travel. It depends on the gentleman, the lady and uh, um, their work, where can they work, where they can work. And they think that the lockdown has taught us that many professions can be transferred online. Right now I'm not uh, advising online dating, even though I can't tell that I'm with two hands against it, no. Uh, where can I listen to your podcast? Uh, on uh, SoundCloud or Apple Podcast, you can dial Dual Image Making and there you will hear our podcast. Uh, so I will also leave the link below this video so you can dial it there and find it. A lot of letters. <laughs> uh, I also listen to the podcast, thank you. Uh, I never write bullshit online, lol, good for you. It's not so simple uh, to provide feedback about the podcasts. Uh, really, why? Uh, there is like this section comment. Can you comment? I don't know that. I'm still a newcomer on podcasts. Uh, I work remotely and I'd love to move from Canada to Eastern Europe and raise a family there because Slavic still respect traditions and family values. Unlike here in Canada where divorce our rate is 50% plus. Well, unfortunately, with marriage, it's always a gamble. And some people marry very young uh, for all the wrong reasons and they get divorced. And hopefully the second marriage will last longer. We have watched it with many of our clients. So the fact that divorce rate is high, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't get married. You should get marry, married for all the right reasons. And you should be smart about your choices. After all, like the motto of our company, where you invest your love, you invest your life. So, Alisa, will we have ladies in our database who will welcome a foreign guy who wants to relocate to Ukraine? Yes, of course. Actually, I think it will increase your chances mm -hmm. because so mm -hmm. many women, they don't want to leave Ukraine. Of course. Uh, the podcast is with Katerina, the latest shown in the video from yesterday about short advice for long-term relationship. Right. That's Katerina Romanenka, our executive director, and we do podcasts together with her and there. Um, Similar to what we are doing now, we discuss certain topics for 40-50 minutes. So if you have the patience to listen to us and you do not mind Russian accents, because sometimes we sound like comrades <laughs> from Soviet movies. Very so, beautiful. Very beautiful comrades. Da. Comrades <laughs> Alicia. Is it, time, it is time to drink tea and vodka and fight the beer. Where is your balalaika? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> This is how some people sometimes um, view Ukraine, even though we are Ukrainians. Two sides of Cubans. <laughs> but we are fun to be around, to be honest. Uh, I love our team. Do you love our team? Of course. Um, I also run my business remotely, so my location is not important and uh, travel a lot. Uh, if you can work remotely, uh, well, you can do well uh, in Ukraine. Of course, if you a plan not to learn a Russian language or Ukrainian language, uh, then you should choose like a bigger city so that you can uh, communicate in English and go around. If you plan to choose like a smaller location, like a small town, uh, then probably you should start learning Russian to get along. Uh, otherwise, like your fiance or your wife, she will have to go around with you to help you cut your hair, grab some coffee, uh, I would be also happy to also uh, I would be happy to see also more Katerina on live because uh, we will definitely do that. Uh, we had we had to schedule so many dates recently, and uh, our beautiful Katerina was burned out with all the dating planning because usually she is the one to plan uh, the dates to schedule them, and uh, after like scheduling the dates for several weeks non-stop, she needs a day off to sleep it through. Uh, do Ukrainians have pet bears like Russians? No. 
next ah, question. And this is why Laika doesn't sound well. Does she play other musical instruments instead? What do you mean doesn't sound well? My balalaika! Comrad Alisa. Who is this? <laughs> All Russian speaking women dance ballet. And yes. play balalaika. Balalaika! Drink, drink tea <laughs> and vodka. And speak like this. We need to finish. <laughs> I think with all the crazy news and with all the negativity that goes on <laughs> online, we had to do something fun to show people that hey, we are here and everything is okay. My and we like keep... is bad. <laughs> and we keep scheduling dates and we keep getting feedback from clients. Um, pet bears, like we have Wolverines in Canada. Like we have a bear at home. Do you have? Yes, and my bear actually has potty cold. I'm talking about my husband. And <laughs> when a man is sick at home, it's like, ah, it's so much worse than having a toddler who is coughing and sneezing. Alisa is sending us, uh, Alisa, do you see Katya is sending us yes, messengers? something, something. Yeah, we will read it there. Your sound quality is not very good today. Uh, well, we are not uh, filming today with a professional camera, so no professional likes on us. We are filming with... The Dear iPhone. gentlemen, where are compliments that we are beautiful, that we make a very fun video? Why do you always concentrate on something bad? Huh? Because we kind of set the standard. Usually, uh, our usually our videos are made with a professional camera, with our operator Sasha, with a professional mic, and today we skip a professional mic. We are filming it. On the phone, computer is on my lap, so we try to do it uh, more casual. Uh, by the way, please tell us if you like this casual format or not. Look at this gorgeous women. Alisa, you have fished a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, yes, you look bright and beautiful. That's why we watch. Thank you so much. I find the quality of videos is great as well as uh, the fun. Thank you. Uh, we are not giving up on professional videos and by the way we, we bought this ring to do live streams and uh, everything that i will be never getting the dream like girls who do it uh, <laughs> they do it to get selfish and never here say never or like right now after like 13 years i'm not just a matchmaker i'm a blogger and you're as well since we're hosting by the way um i definitely think it's great casual format Thank you, thank you so much. We will try to jump online here and there. Uh, tomorrow I have lots of videos to film and uh, we have clients over, so uh, we can't actually relax uh, since we shuttle days non-stop. It is a little difficult to understand your English with the lower quality of sound, but you are both very beautiful and smart. I'm enjoying the, bed, uh, the broadcast very much. Thank you. Yes, we are not native speakers and there is an accent since we live in Ukraine and uh, English is not even my uh, one and only foreign language. So, sometimes when I speak English, uh, ich will benutze deutsche Wörter. Ich weiß nicht warum. So, es ist sehr kompliziert, mehrere Fremdsprachen zu sprechen, weil uh, sehr oft sie vermischt in Kopf. Alisa hasst das, als ich spreche Deutsch. <laughs> I genieße der deutsche Sprache. Uh, ich habe uh, angefangen, Deutsch zu lernen, weil ich genieße sehr Remark und ich wollte Remark uh, lesen und verstehen in Deutsch. Ich habe schon Has a female Ukrainian soldier ever used your matchmaking service? Oh, what, what? Has a female Ukrainian soldier ever used your matchmaking service? Yes. Yes, once. I remember this girl. You remember her? Yes. And about the Laika sound, it was also meant with positive fun. Alisa has definitely more qualities on matchmaking. I'm sorry, I will tell something Svetlana in Russian. This is Babuska. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow. So guys, thank you so much for watching it. We will return to work. We have lots of love to spread. Uh, lots of interviews to conduct. Oh, there's. Uh, would you recommend to start learning Russian or Ukrainian so that you have some basic conversation skills? Both languages are very beautiful. So if you have time, you can do both. Uh, uh, if you're speaking about logic, like uh, 
It is more logical to learn Russian since you can be understood not only in Ukraine, but also in Russia, in Kazakhstan, in Latvia, in Estonia, so the bigger variety of countries. If you plan to learn the language because you plan relocation, let's say, to Lvov, then of course it makes more sense to learn Ukrainian since you want to understand locals there and you want to understand the culture. So everything depends uh, on your reasons. If your best half speaks Ukrainian, then of course you can learn Ukrainian to please her. If you are thinking which language will give you more possibilities, uh, then Russian is spread in more countries than Ukrainian is. Svetlana spricht sehr gutes Deutsch, jetzt sollte sie auch Schweizerdeutsch noch lernen, somit ein nächstes Livecast wird auf Schweizerdeutsch gemacht. Was soll sie haben, ihr Sensei? So ihr Sensei, wo mein Jolschetian, so ihr sie Pferde, Jürgen, wo Feichern sich von haben, ihr? Feichern, ihr wisst, ihr Feichern, na, hen pojuit, hen i. So I wa see one wa so ship him show can you? We may have may have a gender gender concern. Sian say, but sian may have. I love foreign languages. This is why I conduct international matchmaking. Alisa, what foreign language do you want to master next? I still have problems with English. To parle français. No, je ne parle pas français. Ah, on ne parle pas français aussi. Is it Mandarin? Yes, yes, uh, I love it. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day to you as well, uh, guys. We wish you lots of love. Thank you so much for watching it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Uh, don't skip our podcast. If you want to see some photos uh, from our office, subscribe to our Instagram. We share there uh, lots of everyday routine. You will see if it is boring or not. And also we have a TikTok. Oh, by the way. <laughs> we are usually we post videos uh, how we pet books, how we sign books. So it's not as fun, I think, as our YouTube. Ah, uh, I will see all of them. Uh, à Geneva on the Pau. Uh, we have to learn some French. Uh, after we match everyone and spread all the love. Thank you guys for watching it. Now we have to press something. Alisa, what do we have to press? Um, how to stop it? Oops. Oh, I don't know what to press.